Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Logical Nonsense Podcast, NFL Week 2. Wow, a lot of ups and downs. Just got off of Monday Night Football, another upset. The Falcons get it done at the very end. Prime time Kirk. We always hear about how he can't succeed in the big moments. He finally gets it done on prime time. Monday Night Football drives 70 yards after the Eagles miss a crucial third down and three to Saquon Barkley dropped and the Eagles lose. Wow, what a game. Um, definitely an interesting game for sure. Kirk look a Kirk looked a little better. Um, honestly, that last drive, he looked probably the best he had all game. Had it not been for that last drive, Kirk probably would have had a mediocre game. Looks to actually have a decent game. Only getting sacked once this game, which is much better than the last game where he saw TJ Watt. Both running backs saw great games. Uh, we saw Bijan Robinson go for 97 yards. Saquon go for 95. Jalen Hurts honestly played much better this game, in my opinion, than he did the previous game. Uh, they obviously were missing A.J. Brown, which was a huge hurt to them. However, we did see them bring in Britton Covey. Uh, he had six receptions on the night. Devontae Smith had a huge game uh, for him. Very interesting game. Very strategic. Uh, we will be rating all of the games as per usual. It is just myself today. But... Starting with this game that I just talked about, the Falcons-Eagles, I'm going to give this game a grab-your-popcorn. It was a great way to finish the week. Kind of hectic. Love the ending. Uh, you got to love on a walk-off touchdown like that to Drake London at the end there. Very interesting to see the Falcons win in this way. The Eagles, man, just did not accept, expect them to choke it like that. Uh, all they had to do was not let a touchdown. And they did fun way to end the end the week, which is a common theme in this uh, week. All right, going to our next game. Rate the game: Bills versus Dolphins. Interesting game. I'm gonna give this a shit show. Uh, obviously, a huge shit show for the Dolphins. Now they got to figure out who they're gonna put in at quarterback in the time being. Huge question here. A lot of debate here with the Dolphins and if they should continue having Tua as their QB especially with the health concerns. This is to a fourth concussion in the last five years. That is a big deal. Uh, Tua has suffered a lot of concussions, uh, you know, four or five, maybe even six years ago. You know, it might not have been as big of a debate. Uh, CTE wasn't taken as seriously. Now it's taken very seriously and reasonably so. It is a serious, serious condition that can lead to a lot of injuries. So I hope he... He heals well, and he, he really takes the time to consider it. A lot of people are telling him to sit down. I don't blame him. Uh, you know, this is life that we're talking about. It's not just a football game. I think this is where we have to take a step back and think about the game, too, or think about him as a human. Um, and so I hope he makes the right decision for him, whether he thinks that he can play or not. I think uh, he should make the right decision for him and himself. So uh, respect respect to him. On the other side of the ball, I don't want to make this just about the Dolphins. We saw Josh Allen and the Bills play really good, both on offense and defense. Really didn't have to do much on defense. Um, really, Josh Allen didn't have to do much. James Cook scored three touchdowns this game, two on the ground, one one through the air. What a game for him. Um, I mean, you can't ask much more out of a back. I said a week ago that I really like this kid, and I continue to say it. I think he is an underrated back in this league. You know, a lot of people I think overlook him. Um, I would expect him to continue to have a big year. He has been asked to have a bigger role on this team with the, I would say lack there of those big names. And he's kind of a veteran on this team. Khalil Shakur obviously is taking a bigger role as well. We saw him get a lot more targets this game. I'd expect that to continue. Uh, the bills are a tough team, a lot tougher than I thought they're going to be. I thought they're going to hurt with the loss of Stefan Diggs and Gabe Davis. And honestly, I feel like they look even better than they were last year. And that's kind of shocking. I think it's kind of scary. Their defense is looking really solid. Uh, I got to give it to that D-line. Rousseau and Von Miller and Ed Oliver all are looking really good. Um, and Benford. Benford is a very solid corner who needs to be watched out for. So shout out to the Bills. They are going to be a force to be reckoned with. 
All right, our next game is the Saints versus Cowboys. Another shit show. Wow, did the Saints just pour it on. This offense just poured it on. Alvin Kamara, four touchdowns. He's looking like his prime again, which is very fun to see. We haven't seen that in a while. Um, I'm excited to see if this Saints team is legit. I think that's a question. Last year or last game, we really didn't take it seriously because it was against the Panthers team who looks continually like the worst team in the league. Speaking of which, we'll get to it later, but Bryce Young just got benched. So that'll be interesting. But Saints are definitely a team that we might have to consider. I'm curious how they'll do against some tougher competition. Definitely was not in my sights. I believe I put the under. They have a tough one next week against the Eagles. So I'll be curious to see how they go up against a team like the Eagles. Obviously, the Eagles, you know, they they choke tonight, but they're a tough team and they have talent across the board. So they're really going to have to bring it again. We've been waiting for an offensive coordinator to do things with this offense. They've got plenty of weapons with Alvin Kamara, Chris Olave, you know, the list goes on. Rashid, Rashid Shahid is an absolute beast. Um, and is much better than I actually expected him to be. Last year, he was an explosive guy, but he's really refined his talent. Derek Carr is looking at the top of his game. This Saints team is a force to be reckoned with. The Cowboys, they should be questioning their defense right now. The defense did not look good. I am a little nervous about this defense for the Cowboys going forward. They looked very good against the Browns, but that was against Deshaun Watson. Derek Carr should not be looking this against your... Uh, defense the the backers looked lost the corners looked lost this defense as a defense who is supposed to be one of the better ones in the league should not be giving up 44 points to a new orleans saints team um i don't think the saints are that legit i think the saints are maybe better than we predicted but they should not be giving up 44 points so that'll be interesting to see if the cowboys can really piece it together the cowboys have a tough next three games they have the ravens um, the Giants won't be a tough one, but the Steelers will, will give them a tough run for their money as well. So I'm, I'll be very curious for this St or Cowboys Ravens game um, as that'll be a good test for their defense as well in a game that the Ravens kind of feel like they have to win, which we'll get to later as well. Next game we have is the Colts versus the Packers. I kind of fully expected the Colts to kind of pour it on. They really were competitive in that Texans game. And they kind of fell flat. And it's really all due to Anthony Richardson. Anthony Richardson, three interceptions, absolutely terrible. Um, he is kind of hit or miss. He either looks really good or he really doesn't look good. And he really did not look good. Three interceptions was terrible. Um, he's not hitting the receivers he should. Again, Michael Pittman, only three catches for 21 yards. Not good. I think Anthony Richardson is a little overrated. Uh, I think his athletic ability is absolutely insane and definitely should be credited for, but his decision-making needs some work and then he needs to refine that before we can really call him, you know, a certified stud, if you will. So he needs some time. Malik Willis, he got it done. He game managed. Uh, Josh Jacobs, 32 carries for 151 yards is absolutely nuts. Shout out to him on that. And, you know, the Packers did what was needed to be done. I think this Packers team is very tough on defense, especially. And I think this defense is going to keep them in games, keep them competitive. The Packers, honestly, you know, I I could see them, you know, if they win the Titans game next week, which is very, very doable considering they beat this Colts team, you know, watch out for when Jordan loves to come in. He's in a good position. Um, you know, even if they're just two and two, maybe even three and two, Jordan Love could definitely lead this team to the to the playoffs and be in a good position. So I'm excited. I I would rate this game with the Packers and the um Colts. Sorry, I did not change the banner. Uh I would change I would uh rate this game a mid-terranean game. It wasn't very interesting or anything like that. Our next game, Jets versus Titans. This is a Mediterranean game as well. It is so interesting to me because it really felt like the story here for the Jets was not who you think it was. It was not Aaron Rodgers. It was actually their backs. Both Braylon Allen and Brees Hall had two, two touchdowns apiece. And they were really able to have them be a two, 
two-headed dragon, Brees Hall, seven receptions, 52 yards, 14 carries, 62 yards. Um, pretty, pretty crazy. I think really the Titans lost this game. They should have really been in control considering um, how many chances they were given. But Will Levis just kept giving the ball over to the Jets. He not only fumbled the ball, but he also inter- did an interception. And he just looked rattled. I think Levis, while he showed great um, potential last season, he's kind of shown that he's maybe not the quarterback that the Titans want to build their team around. And I think the Titans should be looking for a QB in the offseason. I also think the Titans are kind of regretting their decision of getting rid of Rabel now. Um, It's pretty evident that the coaching is pretty bad there and that the Titans might need a full reset, which kind of sucks because the Titans went out and made a lot of offseason moves, getting Calvin Ridley, getting Tyler Boyd, getting Legereus Sneed, Harold Landry, like, These are guys that you want to build your team around, and the Titans are kind of putting them to waste. If I'm the Jets, though, I'm a little concerned considering it's been two games, and I still am not super, super confident with Aaron Rodgers and his play. There's some work to be done there, and I think you know maybe it's a mid-year thing where we see Rodgers be a little better, but the Titans' defense will keep them in games. They'll keep them competitive, but until we see what Levis not give the ball over and make bad choices, the Titans are going to continue to lose games. Definitely a Mediterranean game. Next, we go to the Vikings versus the 49ers. Definitely one I did not expect. Uh, the 49ers really dropped the ball on this. After week one, I thought Jordan Mason was going to be a fine replacement for Christian McCaffrey. It was evident in week two they missed him. Um, you know, Jordan Mason didn't have a bad game by any means, 20 carries for 100 yards. But I think where we're missing that back is Christian McCaffrey's ability to be a receiving back. We have seen him kind of really stretch the field and for him to not be in the game, I think was very evident. Um, They also made some really bad mistakes, you know, fourth and goal. They didn't convert early in the game and that cost them. You know, I'm pretty sure a few plays later, we got a 97 yard touchdown to Justin Jefferson. And that is a pretty much a 14 point swing. If you look at it that way, you know, instead of scoring in the in the red zone, the Vikings score a 97-yard touchdown, which is huge. Again, I can't believe I'm saying this. Sam Darnold in back-to-back games looked good. Um, this team has weapons, and it is quite crazy to me how many weapons. It was a little shocking to me how good Ty, Ty Chandler looked in this game, especially considering Aaron Jones seems to be kind of that lead back. But Maybe we see more from Ty Chandler. Not good for my fantasy team as I have Aaron Jones, but definitely good. The Vikings, however, though, Jefferson left the game. It sounds like he might be okay for the next game, which is good news for the Vikings, especially considering they're also down Jordan Addison. But if he's out, expect this team to struggle a little bit. I don't see them being successful without Justin Jefferson on the field. I think he continues to prove that he is a top three receiver in the league. A lot of people kind of want to take him out of that conversation. I'm not quite sure why he continues to dominate when he is healthy and when he is in. 49ers, another huge loss with Debo Samuel being out now. After this game, he left the game. He's not going to be available, it sounds like, for a few games, which is huge, especially considering Christian McCaffrey is out for the next month. I have not rated this game. This game for me was a Mediterranean. The 49ers did not look like themselves. They kept making bad decisions, bad mistakes. And ultimately, the Vikings got it done, but it wasn't like a pretty, pretty win. So I'm going to go Mediterranean. Next, we go to the Seahawks versus Patriots. I'm also going to rate this Mediterranean. I know it went into overtime, but it was a very gritty, very old school style of football. There were some burst plays, especially with that DK Metcalf touchdown. You know, there were some big games. I think the Patriots continue to show they are going to ground and pound. Ramondre Stevenson had another great game, but Antonio Gibson did as well. Um, That is good news for the Patriots as Ramondre Stevenson is used to having that heavy load. And so for him to come out and still have that nice back and Antonio Gibson is huge. Brissett continues to be a game manager and continues to at least make this team competitive. The Patriots defense is solid from top to bottom. 
and they can really go one on one is a lot better than what I thought it was. I think Patriots fans expected to be bad this season. And don't get me wrong, their first two games, you know, the Bengals kind of dropped a goose egg. And now they're playing the Seahawks, who I think are decent. But my point here is the Seahawks or the Patriots are better than what I had expected them to be. And I think they're going to be in a lot of games. Expect them to upset some teams this year. The Seahawks get it done in overtime. Good for them. Starting out 2-0 on the season. I'll be curious how they do going into the later half. They have two tough games versus the Dolphins and then the Lions. The Dolphins down being with uh, Tua. This team could easily go 3-0, and um, which is a great start for them. And really a conference where they, they might be able to contend um, if the 49ers are down. So we'll, we'll see what the Seahawks do um, with it, but definitely a Mediterranean game for me. Next, we go to the Giants versus Commanders. Holy crap, this is a shit show. The Giants threw two touchdowns and did not let up a touchdown and still lost. Absolutely nuts. The most Giants loss ever. The only good highlight for the Giants on this game is that Malik Neighbors looks like legitimate deal. I thought he looked legit in week one. Week two, he solidified it. I think this kid is really, really good. Um, he is going to be a solid receiver in their lineup, but they need to get Daniel Jones out of there. He really just is not it. I'm sorry. Uh, the Giants are bad. They should not have lost this game. They did. And it's just classic Giants to lose a game like this. I don't know what else needs to be said. Jaden Daniels looks solid. I think he's going to be one of the better rookies out of this rookie quarterback group. He's looking like one of the top contenders for um, the rookie QBs out of this group, especially after how Caleb Williams played on Sunday night. Um, so very interesting. Going to the Chargers versus Panthers, I'm going to give this another shit show. The Chargers are looking very solid. An old school type of football. They dominated this entire game against the Panthers. And I think it's crazy to me that even after not even a full year of playing, because Bryce Young didn't play all of last year, Bryce Young has been sat for Andy Dalton. That's how bad he's been not even giving him a chance. We'll see if he ever gets another chance. Um, it's a, kind of a sad story, honestly, that he's been put in this bad of a position and has failed so terribly that he is already getting sat down. It, we don't see this very often, especially with young kids. It's it's not good. Um, 18 for 26 with only 84 passing yards. He just does not take chances, and when he does take chances, he throws picks. It's not good. There's nothing to show for. Herbert really doesn't have to do much in this offense. There's so much rushing, 219 yards of rushing, 200 between, or almost 200 yards between J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards. About the same amount of carries, too. This team looks kind of like a nightmare for, for certain future teams um, in, in terms of the way they run the ball. I'll be curious to see if they are able to continue to dominate. You know, the Chargers are going to be a tough team, I think, with Jim Harbaugh, a lot tougher than I expected them to be. Going into the Steelers, we'll see how that defense handles this run defense. They've got a tough stretch, Steelers, uh, Chiefs, and then the Broncos. We will see how the Chargers do in their next three games. The Panthers should just tank. Uh, I think they, they need to get that next QB as well. They are in the QB market. All right, and then going to the Browns versus Jaguars, a terrible, terrible game. I'm going to give it a Mediterranean game. The Jags are so poorly coached, and you know it sucks because I feel like last year they showed so much potential. Doug Peterson needs to step it up. Uh, we know he's capable of better, but he's not showing it. Terrible decisions in this game. The Browns, I don't even know how they came away with this game, if I'm being honest. I don't even think they looked that great. Um, kind of just a shit show across the, the board. I honestly should change my answer to shit show. But yeah, the Browns get it done. I'll be curious to see if they can get it done much longer. This defense is going to continue to put them into games. But the Jags, man, they got to do something. They have the weapons, and they're just still not getting it done. Brian Thomas looks very promising for the Jags. We'll see if he can continue to be that promising factor. 
Going to the Raiders versus Ravens. I'm going to give this a grab your popcorn, actually. I think it was fun watching the Raiders come back. They shouldn't have came back, and the Ravens totally choked this, being up, I think, 23 to 13. Yeah, they the Ravens were up 23 13 with 12 minutes left and totally choked it. Watching Gardner Minshew pull it off was kind of crazy, especially considering he was sacked five times this game. Um, this Raiders O line is absolutely awful and they can't get anything going on the run game. Um, Gardner really had to do it all. Um, Brock Bowers is legit, Devontae Adams is legit. Um, this receiving core isn't as bad. Um, but the Ravens, man, I'd be pressing panic button. This is not good. Starting 0-2, there's only two teams in the last five years that have made the playoffs going 0-2, and it's the 2022 Cincinnati Bengals and the 2020, I think, 2023 Indianapolis Colts. I could be wrong on that, but that's not good, um, especially because the Ravens have a tough three games. Um, they have the Cowboys, the Bills, and the Bengals, all three games that they could lose. Um, if they don't pull their shit together offensively, I don't know what's happening. One moment they look really good, the next they don't. This O line, I know it doesn't look like he's getting sacked that much, but he's constantly under pressure trying to escape the pocket. And I think that's the best they look is when Lamar's outside of the pocket. I'll say it, I'll say it again. Give this man receivers. Just quit giving him re like receivers that are so old nelson aguilar odell beckham jr no give him a new receiver zay flowers is one of his few young fast receivers who actually looks like he could be a receiver on another team and succeed the rest of these receivers aren't good in my opinion mark andrews had an okay game um but he needs more he really does uh give this man more weapons please like i don't know what else to say the ravens defense should be better than it is, especially on paper. They have a lot more guys, and they need to bring it. They cannot let a Raiders offense score all up over them, especially that secondary. I feel like secondary should be their strength. Mike McDonald leaving might be a bad, bad omen for the Ravens' defense because they have not looked the same since. Rams versus Cardinals. Hello, Kyler Murray. Give me grab your popcorn. Actually, I'm going to... I'm going to give you grab your popcorn because it was such a shit show. This Cardinals offense went off. Marvin Harrison Jr. showed that he is the best receiver out of this rookie class and deservedly so. His first touchdown catch was absolutely ridiculous. His second touchdown catch was quite incredible too. This kid's legit. I think Kyler Murray showing that he is one of the better, best, I would say one of the top 15 QBs in the league. Uh, probably you could make a case for 10. I don't know about five, but you could probably make a case for 10 right now. He is looking very solid. 266 for three touchdowns. They just look dominant the entire game. The Rams on the other side, it did not look the same once Cooper Cup went down. Um, and as, as sad as it makes me, I think the Rams are out for the season. Cooper Cup being down, Puk, Puka Nakua being down. Those are Stafford's, top two guys and as much as i'd like to give credit to the marcus robinson and all those guys and maybe that they'll get it done i don't think they will i think stafford's really gonna miss his targets and his top guys he is a find a target and keep throwing it to him and i think he's gonna struggle without him we saw him struggle without them in this game um and the rams it's gonna be a rebuild year it looks like for them i think you know, as as much as I wanted them to be frisky, they're not going to be. The Cardinals, on the other hand, they look like they could possibly sneak into the playoffs, maybe. You know, they are surprising me with how good they are, especially on offense. We'll see if the defense can keep up, especially against a team that's fully healthy. Um, but if they can keep up, the Cardinals, watch out. Bengals Chiefs. Uh, grab your popcorn. This was a fun one to watch. I was close the entire game. There was a lot of dramatics within this game. I thought Joe Burrow and the Bengals were back. They looked really good. They looked in control. Then Joe Burrow fumbles. The Chiefs recover, put it for a touchdown. That was a huge, huge mistake. Then they give the Chiefs the ball. 
and pass interference at the end of the game, which was deservedly called. I know that we don't want it called because it's the Chiefs and it feels like they're constantly getting bailed out by the refs, but it happened and it was a legitimate call. Pacheco going down is going to be interesting for the Chiefs as he's really been their one solid back. The Chiefs have usually been a guy, a team of committee. This season, it's been a little different. P. Ryan, I don't know if he's good enough. I know they're looking at a Kareem Hunt. So it'll be interesting to see what the Chiefs do going forward. Chiefs really didn't play great. I'll say it. I thought their defense stepped it up in the second half big time. But the first half, they didn't look great. Defense stepped it up. Um, Patrick Mahomes didn't look great in this game. I didn't think either two picks, which is unusual for him. And I think it's kind of evident that Kelsey's slowing down. A lot of his targets are slowing down with Hollywood Brown being out. And now Pacheco being out, this team might be in a little bit more trouble than we thought, but it's the chiefs. They figure it out and they figured it out in this game as well. I think there's a case for Harrison Butker being the best kicker in the NFL right now. I know a lot of people want to give it to Jason Tucker, but Butker has missed like two kicks in like the last two or three years. It's absolutely nuts. He is very solid. And, you know, I got to give it to Andy Reid. You know, I don't I don't even like giving the Chiefs that type of credit, but the Chiefs are just that team. They continually get it done, especially in the close, tough games. The Bengals, on the other hand, you know, Similar to the Ravens, they should be saying uh oh as well. Oh and two. Um, luckily they have two games that are very winnable for them with the Commanders and the Panthers. They should win both of those games and be two and two, and they have to win those games if they want to contend. They'll have a really tough one when they play the Ravens, and I think that ultimately might be a more make a break game than people would expect in week five. I think the Bengals um are back, especially when they get T. Higgins back. I think this team could be tough. I think they've also found some different weapons with Iovacius. I think Jamar Chase needs to quit being a little bit of a drama drama queen. He hasn't been playing great. I didn't think he had that great of a season last year. You know, he had games where he played really great, but overall, I think he needs to play better. He needs to step up. Joe Burrow continually deals with a line that kind of is mediocre. Speaking of O lines, the Chiefs left tackle was awful that rookie was awful they had to take him out they put the new one in it was atrocious to watch i think patrick mahomes needs something better at the o-line as well um consistent consistent uh theme within this um this week but i'll be interested to see both of these teams how they are going forward but shout out to the chiefs getting it done again Broncos versus Steelers, very mid-Terranian game. For me, this is the definition of mid-Terranian. The Broncos controlled the second half. They really did. Um, I know they lost, but they really controlled the second half. So it doesn't really make sense to me um, how they lost this game. Actually, it does. Um, Bo Nix doesn't have weapons. Um, it is so evident that he doesn't have weapons. And the one weapon he does have is Cortland Sutton. People lock him down because they know that he's the one weapon. Josh Reynolds had a good game and he looked really good, but that wasn't until the second half. Broncos need to surround their quarterbacks with better weapons. It doesn't make sense to me because if we're going to rebuild, we should fully rebuild. And it feels like we're in between this and that. And it'll be interesting to see when we have cap space, if we actually surround Bo Nix, Bo Nix, Continues to see struggles, four picks now on the season. I hope he can make some better decisions. Um, he looked better in the second half than he did in the first. Flip side of it, the Steelers, the Steelers defense continues to look really good. TJ Watt continues to get to quarterback, looking like one of the best DNs in the league or pass rushers, I should say. Um, Justin Fields continues to game manage and gets it done. I think the Steelers are just going to be their old self, scrappy defense carries them. Offense doesn't really need to produce much, but just enough to win. I think Justin Fields might be staying at QB1. He has done well at game managing and getting it done. And with starting the season with him, there's really hasn't shown anything to take him out. So I don't see why the Steelers would put Russ in. I know Russ is probably honestly the more talented of the two. 
But right now, Justin Fields is proving that he can win with the Steelers, and until he proves he can't, I don't know why they would take him out. All right, and then going to the Bucks versus Lions, Baker. God dang, Baker looks so good right now. The Lions don't look as great as I thought. Um, I'm not quite sure why the Lions threw the ball as much as they did. This is a team that should be running the ball down teams' throat. 56 passing attempts should not happen by Jared Goff. I know he's a good quarterback, but he's not an elite quarterback. He's not Matt Stafford, right? He's he's not Matt Stafford. He should not be throwing the ball 56 times. Um, I think they should be continuing to give it to Gibbs and Montgomery. This Bucks team luckily got it done. Some bad decisions made by Goff twice, two picks, and it really cost them. I know that huge third down stop on Jameer Gibbs, who looked like every time he got the ball was going to blow the freaking hole open. Um, that stop was huge, kind of came out of nowhere. Goff can't get it done on fourth and fourth and like goal or fourth and I think it was like fourth and 12 or something like that. Terrible. You know, that, that sucks. Um, this was a grab your popcorn game for me. I really enjoyed watching these two go at it. And I think it shows that Tampa Bay is a tough, tough team. And, you know, I think there's a case to be made that the Buccaneers might have one of the best one-two punches in receivers in the league. You know, we talk about a lot of teams who have great one-two punches as receivers. These two are almost never mentioned, but they're always consistently good. Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, whether it's both of them, whether it's one of them, somebody's always having a really good game. And this game is Chris Godwin, and he showed that he is freaking a beast. So I... I think it's it's a huge, huge win for the Bucks And the Lions, I think, need to reconsider what they value in their offense because I think it should be their run game. Finally, our last game for the night, Bears-Texans. This was a grab-your-popcorn for me. I love this game. I thought it was so interesting from the high dramatics of all the ginormous hits in this game. The Texans felt like they were absolutely crucifying the Bears um, with their hits. Uh, there was a freaking punch thrown. There was a lot of yapping. Caleb Williams was freaking running for his life. This O-line is absolutely awful. Caleb Williams threw two picks in crunch time, and somehow the Bears were still in it. The Texans low-key should have been up by like 30, but kept choking it. I don't know how. Again, um, Cam Akers' fumble was awful. And the Bears were kind of back in it. You're wondering if Caleb Williams can make some magic. He doesn't. The Texans ice it with that pick. I think CJ Stroud continues to show he is just so solid. He doesn't make the bad mistakes. This Bears defense is really tough. It's very tough. It's very good. CJ Stroud looks good. Um, Nico Collins, he's tough. Man, he's a very, very solid receiver, and he continues to show that he's going to be the number one option, even with a team with Stefan Diggs. And I think that's very interesting. Uh, their connection continues to grow. He He's a beast, man, and he's exciting to watch. Um, am I worried if I'm the Bears? I don't know yet. I think this is kind of what we expected. Caleb Williams got sacked seven times. If I Am I worried about Caleb Williams? No. I'm worried about Caleb Williams' health? Yes. Am I worried about Caleb Williams' O-line? Yes. This is bad. Seven sacks. I know the Texans have a tough defense. They get after it. D'Amico Ryans knows how to defensive scheme, you know, but it's not good. Seven sacks is awful. You got to do something, and whether that's, you know, holding the back end, something. They need extra time, extra protection. Caleb Williams has got to be able to get the ball out to his weapons. I mentioned before he has probably one of the best setups on offense with three really good threats in DJ Moore, Roma Dunze, Keenan Allen. I know Keenan Allen was out this game, but they also have DeAndre Swift and Khalil Herbert who are both proven threats to the offense. 
They got to get the run game going. They got to get something going on offense. They're just not producing the offensive yardage that they should. And that's a shame because they have the weapons to do it. Um, they they need to do something. Eberflus has got to do something. Their O coordinator has to do something. Um, this defense cannot keep carrying them and being competitive in games. Going to my week two MVPs. I think I'm going to give my week two MVP to Nico Collins. I just talked about him. Absolutely ginormous game. Eight catches, 135 yards, and one touchdown. He looked absolutely unstoppable. Corners couldn't guard him. And this is a good Chicago Bears team. They put their number one receiver on this guy, and he still absolutely cooked all of their receivers. I think this is a kit, a guy that you need to watch out for going forward. I would not expect his production to come down. He is somebody that I think we need to consider as a real, real top threat in the receiving game. Absolutely monster game. Shout out to him. Week two MVP. My week two MVP team for the week. I got to give it to the Saints. You know, I think. Last week, I was a little hesitant to give it to them because they played the Panthers. This week, they played the Cowboys, who I think people legitimately consider at least a decent team. You know, whether you want to put the memes aside or whatever, the Saints team looked really good this week. Their offense looked absolutely incredible. Alvin Kamara looked like he was in his prime. David Carr looked like he was in his prime. This team looks unstoppable, and it's kind of crazy because now we've got two two and0 teams from the NFC South the Bucks I expected but the Cowboys I did not if it wasn't announced that Bryce Young was going to be benched I probably would have given my hottest seat to Bryce Young however it was already announced and now I have to give it to the hottest seat to Doug Peterson he dropped a game that he should not have twice the Browns had no business winning this game, especially considering how they looked on offense. And they dropped the ball again. Um, I think the Jags really, truly need to consider dumping Doug Peterson. Um, they have talent on that team. They have talent on the offensive and defensive side, and they just could not get it done. Doug Peterson, you are on the hottest seat. And finally, we go to rapid fire picks where I do my picks for the week. Starting with Thursday Night Football, Patriots, Jets. Give me the Jets. I know that the Patriots look tough. Going to Sunday, Broncos, Bucks. Hate to say it, but I'm going to go with the Bucks. They look very solid. Giants, Browns. I'm going to give it to the Browns. I don't think the Giants can upset the Browns. Packers, Titans. Give me the Packers. I think the t Packers looked a lot more solid than I thought they would. Even though it's in Tennessee, I think the Packers will still get it done. Maybe watch Will Levis get benched. Bears versus Colts. I think the Bears will get it done. As much as I like to think that the Colts are a frisky team, I do think that the Bears will shut down Anthony Richardson on offense. They looked good against a Texans team that looked good on offense. So give me the Bears um, in Indianapolis. Texans, Vikings. I'm going to go with the Texans here. I think the Vikings... While they have had a kind of Cinderella story start to their beginning of the season, I think Jefferson's injury might affect him more than people would think. Give me the Texans. Eagles Saints. It's hard to go against the Saints right now, but I know it's the Eagles. I'm going to go with the Saints. You know, it might be a hot take, but they are hot right now, and I think they want to prove that they really are that team. I love the Eagles. I think they are a really good team, but it, does, it would not surprise me if the Eagles are one and two. Chargers, Steelers. This one's a tough one. I think this is going to be a bruiser, bruiser game. Very low scoring. Since it's in Pittsburgh, give me the Steelers. Panthers versus Raiders. Give me the Raiders. It's going to be a shit show. Dolphins, Seahawks. Give me the Seahawks. I think the Dolphins are going to struggle without. Tua as their QB. The Ravens versus the Cowboys. I think the Ravens need this game more than the Cowboys do. Give me the Ravens. The Niners versus the Rams. I know the Rams are hurt. I know the Niners are hurt, but so are the Rams. Give me the Niners. Lions versus Cards. The Lions. This is going to be a good game. This is going to be a really good game. 
I don't know. I I think the Lions really need this game, but I also think the Cards really want to win this game. Give me the Lions, but it's going to be really close. Chiefs versus Falcons in prime time. Give me the Chiefs. Monday night football, Jags versus Bills. Definitely give me the Bills. I don't think the Jags can get it done. And our last Monday, we have two Monday night games this week. Commanders versus Bengals. Give me the Bengals on prime time. To finish it off, I just want to say I am definitely waiting for that ASAP Rocky album to come out. I'm excited to talk about it. I think there's going to be coming out with some an interesting sound. We've definitely been hearing some unique singles come out from him where we hear a more high pace hype sound. Um, I'll be interested to see what he comes out with. I know this is supposed to come out this Friday. Um, expect a three hits, three misses on my TikTok as well as a full on album review and full depth in analysis. If you're a fan of this show, you know what those look like. If you're not, definitely subscribe to find out. Um, If you're still listening to this, I really appreciate you. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, follow all my socials. I'm posting content pretty much daily. I appreciate all your guys' support and that you're still with me. I mean, this has been a great journey, so I appreciate you. And um, have a great night. Have a great morning wherever you're listening to this.